హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఈవినింగ్ వెల్కమ్ టు వెంకన్న ఇంగ్లీష్ గురు హలో ఎవ్రీవాన్ వెల్కమ్ టు వెంకన్న ఇంగ్లీష్ గురు friends we'll be starting our class in a minute yes friends yeah very good evening we'll be starting our class in a minute wait for some time before we going before we go to the class yes friends friends wait for a second yeah yes yo oh, ho oh. a very good evening all so you guys are waiting yes wonderful wonderful yeah very good evening very good evening bharati madam surindra devi madam a very good evening harish sir santosh sukanya madam and manikandan shobha madam kvs devi aruna madam next a very good evening sumalata dana and anjali so friends actually we directly going to the topic yesterday we started a topic called renaissance yes yesterday we started a topic called renaissance as a part of renaissance i spoke i gave you a little bit introduction with regard to renaissance let me ask you two, two to three questions before i go into the class the concept of renaissance first began in dash first became popular in come on quick answer my friends the concept of renaissance first became popular in in which country come on quick my friends who will answer this question the concept of renaissance first became popular in wonderful santoshi madam italy yes yes yesterday i told you a code to remember the writers of uh, italian literature okay yesterday i told you a quote to remember the writers of italian literature what is the code can somebody say can somebody say the title of the code what is the right lmp rd wonderful wonderful madam wonderful tirupati wonderful lmp rt l refers to leonardo da vinci m refers to michael angelo and p refers to francesco petrarch r refers to raphael and d refers to who will say the answer d d refers to come on come on come on quick guys who will answer this question d refers to come on quick friends yes dante dante is popular for one of the popular epics in italian literature and which is composed in three parts what is the title of the book dante who is popular for a popular book what is the title of the book divine comedy wonderful bharati madam divine comedy yes very very important one yes my friends renaissance means rebirth renaissance which means rebirth according to dash language renaissance which means rebirth according to dash language french german english italian come on who will answer this yes nagaraju wonderful french wonderful wonderful yes this is what we been talking about yes yes it's okay you are all active and we'll go into the topic yes come on guys we'll be talking about today what is the impact of uh, the concept of uh, renaissance on english literature that we are going to talk about today what are the major major themes major broad features so that you will guess 
the themes of different books that are composed during this period. See my friends, impact on English literature, the concept of Renaissance which influenced English literature. The beginning of English Renaissance is often taken to be 1485. Friends, according to after the Dark Ages, we discussed the period from 1453 to 1485. This is called Tudor Dynasty or Dark Ages, which means after the 100 years of war from 1337 to 1453, there was no control over the common people. And the common people were controlled by the local kings and who were called Tudors at the time, Tudor dynasty. And as there was a fall of Constantinople and people and, and uh, lost and they started losing their faith on Catholic Church and the king. Hence what happened, people were not under the control of the church or the king or the Bible. Hence, these were controlled by the local kings, which you can say the period from 1453 to 1485, which you can say Tudor dynasty. And after Tudor dynasty, 1485, most of the humanists, the scholars of Renaissance, they believed that the concept of Renaissance, which became popular only after 1485, but many of the people, according to them, it is 1500. And the Battle of Bosworth ended the War of Roses, yes, 1453 to 1485, which you can say the War of Roses and the Tudor dynasty or the Dark Ages. This is, this is what the period which is considered to be. And most of the works that are written by Shakespeare dealt with the War of Roses. What actually happened during 14th century? In 1450, in 1480, in 1500, that is what is discussed by Wordsworth, sorry, discussed by Shakespeare in his poet and in his works. Inaugurated the Tudor dynasty, the Elizabethan era regarded the height of English Renaissance mainly. So who spoke about the concept of autonomy, concept of and freedom in life, thought, religion, art? And it was mainly Renaissance writers. Who are the popular Renaissance writers like Christopher Marlowe, Ben Johnson, Shakespeare, Francis Bacon, Thomas Kidd, Thomas Nash, Thomas Lodge, Robert Greene. Like there are plenty of writers who exhibited the principles of uh, uh, freedom, autonomy in life, thought, religion. And they wrote a lot of literature in support of Protestantism, in support of Puritanism, in by opposing the Bible, by rejecting the principles that are written and that are imposed by the king, imposed by the Catholic Church. That's what you can say, the Elizabethan era. The Elizabethan era, which is considered the height of the English Renaissance. Next, my friends, the dominant art forms of the English Renaissance were literature. So in which fields did the writers, did the humanist expose their ideas? What fields did they uh, select? Yesterday we discussed. The concept of Renaissance can, do, can be attributed to Lamsa, as I told you, a code, literature, arts, painting, sculpture, architecture. So here in English literature, but broadly, the concept of Renaissance is attributed to literature, arts, painting, sculpture, and architecture. But with regard to English literature, three important fields were influenced. So most of the writers, most of the experts, and mainly in English Renaissance, they spoke about the importance of autonomy, importance of Renaissance through literature first. Literature, which means they wrote a lot of poetry and expressed their autonomy. And they wrote a lot of plays, expressed their autonomy in terms of writing literature. Second, music. Another important concept is music. So music also played an important role to express their ideas. Next, visual arts. Visual arts painting, which became a part for that. So LMV, you can say LMV, which means the concept of Renaissance, the principles of Renaissance were exposed in English literature in, in one of the following fields, in not the following fields. Like that also you will get a bit. You can remember this literature, music and visual arts. In these three, only in English literature, but with regard to Italian and uh, it included five fields, literature, arts, painting, sculpture, architecture. But in English, it, 
and only three fields literature music and visual arts and english renaissance were much less significant than in italian literature so we gave priority for english people they gave priority for only three not the other the english renaissance can only truly be said to begin in the 1520s some some of the experts they believed that the concept of renaissance became popular only 1520s and continued till 1620s it is a kind of notion so when we talk about and by the time of elizabethan literature vigorous literary culture in both drama and poetry you see so the ideals of english literature the ideals of renaissance the concepts of renaissance the principles of renaissance were mainly exhibited in two major areas because these were the these were the only tools to the writers of the time one is drama so for example once we read the read the plays of dr fortes and all the plays are examples for tragedies and he talks about quest search so what is the uh, what 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 are the major ideas of a renaissance man searching for something searching for identity searching for freedom searching for individuality so once you read the plays dr fortes searching for knowledge and the jew of malta searching for power so like everything every drama which which exhibits the ideals of uh, renaissance so one is drama second one is poetry and the popular writers like edmund spenser william shakespeare sir philip sidney thomas sir thomas watt who belongs to this period who introduced sonnet into english literature and blank verse into english literature rhyme royal into english literature octave rhyme into english literature these are all the poetic techniques which were introduced into english literature by sir thomas watt we have gone through as part of our prosody and poetry and sir thomas more who who is a popular writer who composed and utopia the first utopian novel the prose next francis bacon who talks about bacanian method inductive reasoning observation method these are all the principles so what is a, why observation required why bacanian method is required why scientific method methods are required because renaissance man should always look for something else and should not be static should not only depend on the bible depend on the the ideas that are there already in the world and the the real renaissance man should look for new things look for his identity in the world so it is possible through scientific method through bacanian method through observation method according to francis bacon so he started observing people whether somebody said this for example in the bible there were plenty of ideas like earth is the static item and which is an independent planet around all other planets revolve around the earth this is what written in the bible at the time francis bacon did not believe not not just francis bacon many of the scholars during this period did not believe and they observed they understood and later they came to know that it is not the earth which is a static place it is the sun and through which all other planets revolve this is this came into existence only through the methods that are suggested by francis bacon so all these aspects which we come to know here next friends the works of this period are also affected by henry the eighth's declaration of independence from the catholic church remember so so why and what was the major reason to give independence away from catholic church because people started neglecting the principles of catholicism and they were questioning not from only 1500 and we need to talk from the uh, we need to begin from sir thomas watt sorry sir thomas becket in 1170 he started questioning henry the 4 he started he was the head preacher who questioned the principles of the church principles of the king for the first time in 1170 and as a result he was banished from the country for 7 years after again he came back and he started educating the people it is not the king who is the supreme supreme of this world and all are equal these are the ideas which were cultivated by thomas becket but king did not accept what did he do he assassinated so not just only sir thomas watt and sorry thomas bucket and next you can also find out another character like saint john john of arc in 1429 how she was captured by the british army and the catholic church how she was burned to death 
because she spoke about she directly she said to the common people that she was speaking to the almighty jesus but people did not believe even this did not uh, did, this was not accepted by the king of the time and uh, this lady joan of arc was captured she was burned to death so who are all these people the first uh, important people who spoke about who spoke against catholic church who were considered to be first protestants who spoke about and uh, new ideas freedom autonomy in life autonomy in religion autonomy in thoughts autonomy in thinking and which is against catholicism which is against the bible which is against the church that is why all these incidents made henry the 8th to give independence and when you read the place during this period you come to know what made so all these incidents and events which have and which were written which became and which were against the catholic church were discussed described by a number of writers a number of dramatists during renaissance that's what you talk about so the themes of renaissance are against catholicism against catholic church against the bible against the king and in only for the sake of the common people's individual rights individual autonomy in their life in their society in their thinking that's what next technological advances in sailing and cartography cartography how people used to find out the science of uh, studying maps we read indian map and world maps so the science of that became a reality only because of the studies of cartography cartography the study of maps so technological advances in sailing and cartography this period renaissance is considered to be the first one east india company became popular and they have start they have established east india company they started sailing all over the world the british people next and which are reflected in generally non religious themes that's what my friends so during this period you talk about not to and not only religious but also non religious ideas so non religious which mean against catholicism against catholic church against the bible next various shipwreck adventures of shakespeare for example shakespeare talks about a lot of adventures of ship shipwreck adventures so all these so maybe the process of traveling of the a set of people of east india company traveling to different parts of the world like in 14, 1493 columbus discovered america and in 1490s 14 and 1500 and in 1611 for the first time and the east india company reached india and muchli patnam in 1611 you come to know so all these incidents which took place during this period next elizabeth herself during during this period elizabeth herself was a product of renaissance humanism queen elizabeth the one who became the ruler queen elizabeth the one who became the ruler during this period queen elizabeth the one she was a product of humanism humanism the thoughts of renaissance the ideas of renaissance trained by rosa ascam very very important she was a close associate of uh, and people say that rosa ascam was the direct beloved of elizabeth and indirect it was shakespeare people and it and it, it is revealed and she wrote a number of occasional poems number of she is she is never married but according to certain texts she had some kind of relationship with rose rascom such as on mosier's departure a critical moments of her life english thought advanced towards modern science with the becanian method so which means scientific method which means advance the advancement of learning which is a popular text written by francis bacon who is considered to be the father of english essay Francis Bacon is called father of English essay and Christopher Marlowe is called the father of English drama remember my friend so baconian method because of uh, so how english uh, how english people they went on exploring a number of scientific events this is also one of the themes of renaissance like the language of the book of common prayer very very important the book of common prayer published in 1549 this is anonymous text but this becomes a source for writing the paddle lost the paddle lost you know the popular epic written by john milton first composed in 10 volumes in 16 and 67 in 1671 it was published and it was composed in 12 volumes so for writing the book 
the pad is lost the book of common prayer became a swords you may get a bit what is the what is the swords for writing the pad is lost the book of common prayer when in 1549 who is the author anonymous nobody knows this was widely read by the people at the time next at the end of the period the authorized version of the bible very very important several times this bit featured in net examination nta a set examination the authorized version of the bible or the king's translation of the bible we can say the authorized version or the king's translation of the bible so james version of the bible to americans of the bible in 1611 had enduring impacts on the english consciousness so during this period the themes of writing plays and writing poetry and were influenced by the translation of the bible the authorized version of the bible james translation of the bible this is so king james 1 during i will talk about this in elaborated way with regard to only bible later on but only talk about so during this period the concepts of the bible translation of the bible also one of the themes during this period next friends next and the when you want to understand the concepts of uh, renaissance you can understand and uh, themes that are broadly categorized in four major aspects renaissance as new learning so who are the writers who spoke about renaissance from the perspectives of new learning next renaissance as new religion which means new learning which which meant only people used to before renaissance after renaissance people or writers they used to only focus on the bible itself and they were not able to look beyond the bible so renaissance brought a new perspective to look beyond the bible hence it brought a number of ways of learning something and literature was about all these new ways of learning next new religion so renaissance also brought a new religion so till 15th century people thought that the concept of christianity the concept of catholicism is the only religion on the world in in this world but after renaissance people thought that no it is not just uh, catholicism puritanism is also one of the religions and protestantism is also one of the religion there are other religions on the ou- outer world and england which is not the only place on the earth there are other parts of the world there are other religions these religions are to be respected protected or to be practiced not to be not just only to practice the catholicism these principles were exhibited by the writers first they were opposed but they were exhibited in terms of writing literature later they were accepted and they became a kind of reality that's what you can say a number of religions in the world next renaissance as new world so when we talk about the literature till 1500 literature included so setting for example once you understand setting of the, every play every poetry was only about england only about scotland only about ireland but after renaissance people and uh, writers discovered that there is other world like america like india like is like east like asia there are plenty of other parts of the world and they have started visiting and literature was written about those places poetry a number of poems a number of plays were written about not only about Eng- english world but also about american world america which is considered to be the new england at the time in 16th century and east and east place or asia so literature was also about east eastern world rather than only focusing on the on, on the western world european world next new cosmos and ptolemaic theory decartes ideas okay galileo's ideas so and during this period you can find a number of theorist a number of a uh, number of writers and who invented a number of tools and spoke against the bible a theories of the bible with regard to cosmos and the bible believed that for example today even we see we watch a lot and we think heaven is a place which is there in over our head over the sky hell is a place which is there under this earth this is the notion which we have which is still practiced in our indian movie this is actually a basis which is created from the concepts of the bible but a number of writers like decartes galileo they questioned these ideas these are not true and th- there is there are a lot of cosmos beyond this world that is what the ideas 
they mentioned and all these ideas were put into practice in terms of writing plays and in terms of writing uh, poetry that is what those are considered to be the major themes of uh, themes of renaissance my friends so when you see renaissance as new learning renaissance scholars of the of the classics call humanists what do we call the classics uh, they are considered to be humanists and one of them was erasmus very very important one and he was a popular uh, popular humanist he revived the knowledge of the greek language and roman authors so he changed because once we talk about the bible and which is written from the perspectives of greek or latin bible which you know which is actually written in hebrew and which took the basis from greek or latin and erasmus and he revived these aspects according to the latest trend in 15th century william caxton you know the contribution of william caxton and who brought the printing printing press from germany to england in 1476 and he was the first person who printed books started printing books and the first books that were printed in english were the canterbury tales and you can see another important one thomas malory's le mordi arthur the very very important books which were composed and which you can see these are very important my friends several times these were asked in the history of jldl net set examinations printing press was brought to england by first book was printed in english in dash what is the first book that is printed what is the second book that is printed which of the following anonymous book anonymous book that is printed in 1477 like there were plenty of bits and who is called the first humanist erasmus who revived the and the concepts of the bible which were which was written in greek and latin it was erasmus like plenty of bits were uh, bits were given with regard to this next friends renaissance aristocracy renaissance aristocracy expressed in baldasar so you you can remember the quote here and uh, this book is published in 1528 books on the character this book talks about courtier means character obligations training of the man of the court sets up the ideal of the completely rounded or universal man universal man is nothing but who is the real renaissance man developed in all his faculties and skills physical intellectual artistic which means a renaissance man should be always physically fit mentally fit spiritually fit and he is considered to be the real courtier okay next he is specially trained to be a warrior and statesman who is representative for the society a representative for the human beings a representative for the society or culture or a nation so who is an ideal renaissance man an ideal renaissance man is going to have all these qualities so these qualities were described exhibited in terms of writing literature in terms of writing plays writing novels not novels writing plays writing poetry because these were the major 99 percentage of literature was about only these next and a renaissance man is capable of capable also has an athlete so a renaissance man should be as an athlete and should be a philosopher why people call sir philip sidney as the first renaissance man because he possesses all these qualities as an artist as a conversationist as a man of society who sacrificed himself for the so- for the sake of society the courtier's relations to women and women to men are represented in accordance with the quasi religious code of platonic love very true love an ideal love courtly love only renaissance man loves only one candidate next you see his activities and productions are crowned by graces spegetra which means spontaneity and casual ease with which someone has been trained to meet the demands of very complex and and exacting rules leonardo da vinci and sir philip sidney in england are often considered to be representatives of the courtly law ideal the real courtiers because they are the real writers who spoke about who maintained these ideals in their life that's what they are considered to be the best renaissance man leonardo da vinci the first best italian uh, renaissance man and sir philip sidney the first english renaissance man who possesses the qualities of athlete the qualities of socialist the qual- qualities of philosopher the qualities of having courtly love ideal love all these aspects 
so these were exhibited in terms of writing literature so during this this period a lot of literature a lot of love stories a lot of love poems a lot of uh, love plays where they exhibited these qualities into them so that's what you can see you can read the plays that are composed by shakespeare you can find in love words these qualities they become representative for the other people other characters in a society in a country or, or in the world next you can see my friends renaissance has a new religion renaissance has a new religion second important concept which we are talking about the reformation led by martin luther 1483 1546 next against roman catholic church new religion which means renaissance during this period most of the humanists scholars they fought most of the writers dramatists poets wrote literature against catholic church next this early protestantism so the process of rejecting this which you can say protestantism or else you can say puritanism next uh, puritanism was grounded on individuals inner experience of spiritual struggle and salvation and the the individual who is not going to just going to depend on the bible and he also gives priority to his own individuality his own thinking his own observation his own freedom and he gives all that which is nothing but protestantism which is nothing but puritanism and faith and was alone thought thought competent to save so same thing and the bible says you need to have faith in the same way protestants they also believe that you need to have belief next friends salvation itself was regarded the direct transaction moksha self actualization salvation everybody wants in this world today everybody wants moksha or salvation you need to you need to have moksha at the end so for example you need to recognize your identity in this world who am i what am i doing you need to have your own self actualization atma sakshatkaram you see and realization of one self who am i what am i doing in this world what needs to be done so that is what going to be salvation itself is regarded a direct transaction with the god next is the theater of the indiv- and this is exhibited through literature through poetry through plays and this is the necessity of intermediation by the church priest and sacrament protestantism an extreme manifestation of renaissance individual what does it mean by protestantism an extreme so you you don't give priority to the bible you just give priority to your own individuality your own autonomy extreme autonomy extreme individuality you will have a lot of individuality in terms of looking at your own life looking at your own thoughts looking at your own uh, your own religion so that's what that is considered to be the protestantism today you see one of the major important thing in this world today is everybody wants to have freedom individuality anything and you are you, if you control someone and uh, people dislike you even your kids even your wife and husband if you are so we we should not do that that is what in the modern world you can say a kind of protestantism individuality and proposed by and john calvin and and his puritan followers so puritan protestantism both are same england officially broke with the catholic church during the reign of end the 8th next so during renaissance end the 8th was the king at the beginning later in 1558 elizabeth a queen elizabeth the one he she becomes a king the new state of religious establishment anglican church catholic anglicanism so which is the opposite of catholicism anglican church headed by the monarch retained by many of the characteristics of old church while embracing selected protestant theological principles the result was a political theological compromise that remained the subject of and heated debate of centuries this this is not required forget about and when you see renaissance as a new world very very important during this during this period most of the renaissance scholars they discovered a new new world the western world the eastern world the american world the new england or indian context in 1493 92 christopher columbus believed who discovered what new uh, america believed old greek idea that the world is a globe and he made the statement sailed west to find a new 
commercial route to the east where he was able to find out america where he was able to find out india only to be frustrated by the unexpected barrier of a new continent this new continent is nothing but new england which is nothing but america next the succeeding exploitations of this continent and its native populations and its settlement by europeans gave new materials to the literary imagination that is what so literature meant in according to history of english history of american literature the period from 1607 to 1775 this is called early colonial period early colonial period where uh, people from england people from spain people from the european world they landed in america they uh, and that at the time america is actually called new england where england which is actually the ancestors from england ancestors from where you know the european world so when you read literature during this period literature which is written during 1500 to 1660 you talk about all these events and incidents how people went there and how they captured how they became the rulers there all these discussions which become a part of renaissance that is what new world next the magic world yes shakespeare when you read the plays of shakespeare like the tempest and where shakespeare talks about magic world what is magic world new england magic world and some of the magic worlds according to shakespeare may be india shakespeare the tempest the treatment of its native inhabitants by prospero and others in tempest next is based on a contemporary account of shipwreck of bermuda and other writings about voyages to new world new world new england new england is nothing but america so all this discussion the moment you go on reading you need to recognize that they are exhibiting the invasions of those uh, places next friends next it was economic exploitation of the new world so what did they do they left england they start they uh, sailed to other parts of the world they exploited financially economically what they did in in india you know so that is what so all this economic economic uh, economical exploitation financial explo- exploitation cultural exploitation moral exploitation imposition imposition of their own religion on other parts of the world all these discussions you can read during this period next of cruel oppressive and devastating to the native people how they devastated the local people how they destroyed the local culture local religion and for example if you think of america if you think of africa so all these incidents of the chief trade routes helped establish the commercial prosperity in england and helped for the development of vigorous intellectual and artistic life for their own development so this is with regard to and the few aspects next you see renaissance as a new cosmos new world new cosmic world and beyond the sky you can find other other part other universes there are thousands of universes in this world as we have an sun an earth moon venus like different planets that we have in the same way there are lakhs of universes in this world people recognized people and experts like scientists like galileo descartes who made a revolutionary statement you can see this and what the ideas which were written in the bible and which is contrary to uh, during this period most of them they spoke against the bible and some of the people were beheaded because it, it, because in those days speaking against the church which is an offense and people were killed they were beheaded but they spoke about that is what renaissance that is what rediscovery that is what freedom that is what reawakening rediscovery autonomy so you see cosmos of the medieval astronomy of medieval christian theology was ptolemic so ptolemic theory ptolemic theory which is popular from the classical age what does what is this ptolemic theory ptolemic theory believes that earth is a globe this earth is a static item around that all other planets are evolved and this is an independent planet this is there from the bible in the bible and for more than 20 at, at, for, from the classical age to 15th century and people like galileo descartes spoke again against this heaven for example the ptolemic theory believes that heaven 
and which is also called empyrean remember this word heaven according to ptolemaic theory according to bible empyrean was thought to be situated above the sphere we think do you really believe that heaven is going to be there above our above our head we do not know but we believe in our religious books hell to be situated either at the center of the earth according to dante's inferno or else below the system of the sphere for example john milton's paddle lost same john milton also who was able to follow the things that were written in the bible because he spoke again as the bible he was imprisoned a couple of times because speaking something again in the church again in the bible which is an offense during this period many scholars were they were imprisoned even john milton was imprisoned hence what did he do though he knew the ideas given by descartes galileo but still to escape the offenses from the church offenses from the king and he wrote the ideas that were given in the bible next and in 1543 copernicus very very important copernicus theory which is opposite to and ptolemic theory Coper copernicus published this new hypothesis concerning the astronomic system what are the ideas of copernicus the physicist johannes kepler galileo and english physician and physiologist william harvey so all these writers they spoke something against ptolemic theory against the classical theory against the bible against the king against the catholicism and the copernicus theory which is the opposite of ptolemaic theory proposed a system in which the center is the sun what is the center it is the sun not the earth it is the sun not the earth but they spoke about but what happened all these experts were killed by the king they were beheaded they were thrown out of the society they were considered anti social elements but based on these ideas a number of writers a number of writers like christopher marlowe ben johnson robert green george peele or shakespeare though they were not able to uh, speak again as the church but they were able to write in terms of drama in terms of poetry to escape from the because if you speak something against the church directly you are thrown into prison but what did they do they uh, they followed indirect approach the process of conveying these ideas in terms of drama in terms of poetry like john dunn or george herbert next in which the earth is not stationary earth is not stationary it is the it is the sun and but only one planet among many planets all of which revolve around the sun this is copernicus theory what is ptolemaic theory earth is stationary all other planets revolve around the sun which is there in the bible which is there and for more than 15 or 16 centuries and which is and during this period of renaissance writers spoke again as the church again as the bible again as ptolemaic theory and invented a new theory that is copernicus theory this is exhibited in terms of literature so what could be the theme what could be the themes of literature written during this period you need to think next friends in 1611 when dun wrote the first anniversary so in john dun who spoke something in support of copernicus theory by opposing the ptolemaic theory that is what this description he did only to support the ancient theme and or literary topos of the world's decay and to enforce standard christian contemporary mundis still later milton in paddle lost expressed a suspicion of judgment between the ptolemaic and copernicus theory and they know they knew that the problem was they were not able to speak directly against the uh, catholicism against the church because if they speak something what will happen if they speak against ptolemaic theory against the bible against the church against the catholicism they they are not going to be in this world so that's what next friends and he adapted however the old ptolemaic scheme as a cosmic setting for his poem who john milton that's what my friends we need to remember john milton also followed the old system of ptolemaic theory he was not able to use the copernicus theory where and earth is not a stationary it is the sun next and because it was more finely traditional very very important because he chose traditional theories rather than the modern one rather than the new one and adapted to his narrative purposes even after copernicus the cosmos of many writers in the elizabethan era and 
uh, exemplified Shakespeare's plays remained not only Ptolemaic, it remained also animated cosmos. For example, Shakespeare, he employed two Ptolemaic and animated one like Copernicus. That was invested with occult powers, inhibited witchcrafts, the process of using witchcrafts and control men's lives and the process of including demons, spirits, all these uh, were included by many writers during this period. Next, friends, these are very, so these bits of feed. I think, therefore, I am. So, here, uh, Descartes emphasizes the concepts of uh, thinking. Okay. So, see, the cosmos was the physical cosmos of René Descartes. Okay, René Descartes, where he uses this term, give me extension and motion, I will construct the universe. So what you are talking about, talking from the perspective of the Bible, which is wrong, you can give me extension, you can give me extension and motion, I will construct the other universe, because there are hundreds of universes in this world, lakhs of universes in this world, according to Galileo, and where he invents through telescope. And you also make this statement, I think, therefore I am. It is... It is the thinking. You need to have a lot of independent thinking, individual thinking. And the inwards of Descartes and the new science consisted of extended particles of matter which moved in space. Ext the world which includes extended part particles which move here and there. All these concepts were included in terms of writing literature. According to fixed mathematical laws and free from an interference by angels, demons, human prayer and occult magical powers. Next, friends, Descartes, who also makes, and based on the ideas given by Descartes, Francis Bacon, who made a statement, Baconian method, scientific method, observation method, you can see. Bacon, Francis Bacon's phrases, and Descartes, and were converted into philosophical, physical world, were converted into philosophical worldview. And enlightenment, another concept which is highlighted by Francis Bacon through his literature, John Locke in his literature, so enlightenment, which gives a lot of priority for thinking, scientific thinking, reasoning, not just believing what is there, what, what is there, the static items. Next, uh, did women uh, have renaissance? This is an essay which is written by John Kelly. Just remember. So these are all a few aspects with regard to renaissance, my friends. So all these are various components and which were included in terms of writing plays, in terms of writing poetry, Okay, during Renaissance period, which influenced a number of writers, a number of poets, a number of dramatists, the ideas of all these ideas influenced, hence the literature of Renaissance. So this is what uh, Renaissance and the major features, my friends. And if you get any doubts with regard to, if you get any doubts with regard to uh, this, and you can ask me tomorrow and we'll meet and we'll talk about all these components and tomorrow in our class. And if you get any doubts, you go on asking so that I'll be able to clarify. Yes, guys. Yes, yes. Thank you, guys. Thank you for the, thank you for the wishes. Thank you. Thank you for the wishes, man. Thank you so much. Really, you made my day a wonderful. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you so much. And we'll be meeting tomorrow. And uh, tomorrow we are not going to have a class, but we will have class with re in relation to pedagogy, my friends. So if you are interested, you can. You, you, you can. You, you also attend. Okay. Right, guys. See you then.